The life in Sudan was quite a normal and very good life. We came from a big family. We are very close and very connected. But when the war started in Darfur, I don't know how to describe it. The day they come and attack our hometown, everyone was running away and they are shooting two of my friends and my grandmother died that day. We ran away from Darfur to Malaysia. When you are a refugee, you don't have any right in Malaysia. You don't have the right to work, you don't have the right to study, so you have to find your own way. My father had a problem in the liver. My dad was not able to get any treatment over there. My mom went to the UN and they were like, we will send you to the United States. I'm over 18, so my file was uh, spread from my family file. They have to go first, then I will catch them later. So I just agreed because I need my father to get the treatment. I was waiting to travel from Malaysia for years and a half. When my daughter was born, I gave her my mom's name because when I call her name, I remember my family. We began working with our client to reunite him with his family in the United States in December. I left my house, I sell everything, I was preparing to leave. If it's found an apartment for him, and we all were 100% ready, and we were expecting him to come the next day. But when they told me that my fire, my flight is canceled, uh, I don't know. I just was crying, I, know, I don't know where to go or what to do. We started making calls to the relatives, informing them that, unfortunately, they would not be reunited. Some people saying that it's for 120 days, and other people saying that maybe it's going to be forever. I was even, I think, to commit suicide, you know that? GFS called me and they told me that if you heard anything from my brother, we need to inform them and they will try their best to bring my brother here. They really stood for us and I do really appreciate that. When I heard about the judge, he stopped the president order so I was, oh yeah, there are a chance for me. I remember he called me, I was in the market. He said, are you ready to fly? I said, yes, if you want me to come now, I will come. I didn't sleep that night. <laughs> When I was in airplane and they saying that we are landing in Seattle, I didn't believe. I go out and I find the the weather was freezing. I know I realized that I'm in the United States. Me, <laughs> I was over the moon to see my brother because I thought that I won't be seeing him again. And he's not just my brother; he's my best friend. <laughs> Everyone was excited to see me, but they were more excited to see my daughter. When my mom, when she saw her, she just took her and hugged her, and she said, from today, I won't give it to you. Finally, I see my dad. My father had a liver transplant. He was standing, and he came and hugged me. I never feel that happens in my life. GFS got my apartment. They bring for me the necessities that I need to use. And then the next day started our services of getting them accustomed to the U.S., having them meet with an employment specialist, teaching them how to use the bus, and we'll continue to work with them over the next few weeks as they enroll in English classes, helping connect them to education opportunities. I want to be a computer engineer. To hear that you're able to work and study freely is very good. I feel happy for myself and for my entire family, and especially my daughter. I didn't believe that, you know, one day I'm gonna be here. So it's like, uh, it's like I'm living my dream.